Hi everyone, today I'm doing a video about the bomb or the bill of materials for the Wolverine amplifier. So this bill of materials has quite a lot of parts and I think for people or for beginners it might be a little bit overwhelming or a little bit daunting to have a look at how many parts and choices there are. So we'll, we'll go through it in a step-by-step -step way and maybe do a little bit of a worked example for the choices that you've got. Okay, so let's have a quick look. So here's the build guide. Now let's start by looking at which sections discuss the bill of materials. So uh, we'll go back the other way. Let's have a look here. So the round pin headers. So there's a choice that's listed in the bomb. I would suggest to stick with what has been suggested there because the height and the, uh, the pad drill holes and all the rest of it need to be correct so just go with what's specified there there is a couple of options for resistors in the bomb and we'll have a look at the actual spreadsheet in a minute but you've got some choices to make whether you go for higher tolerance or lower tolerance in terms of you know what percentage accuracy you would like the thermal specifications of the resistor so if you look at the resistor data sheet you can see how many parts per million per degree C, the ohmic value will change by. So we'll go a little bit further. All right, let's so flick good. over to the actual bomb. So we'll have a quick look at the spreadsheet itself. So here we go, Wolverine project bomb. So, so on sheet two, it gives you some options to have a quick look at to see you know, what sort of parts you should choose in terms of the transformer VA rating and the output transistors and driver transistors you might want to consider for a different output power that you're building towards. So I would strongly suggest that you look at this page and make some choices here before you go ahead and order your parts. For example, if you are looking at building, I don't know, let's say, a 200 watt at 8 ohm amplifier. Right, you're going to need a 1000 VA transformer plan to run a 4 ohm load, which uh, equates to 50 volts AC on the secondary winding, which will give you 71 volts approximately DC on the DC rails. So just bear in mind you need to have a, have a quick look at this page here and then go through bit by bit. So if you chose to make that 200 watt amplifier, then you're going to really need to look at which transistors here in this section are suitable, and then the, the driver transistors that you might require here. All right. So let's do an example. So I plan to use the on semi their NJW0281 and NJW0302 and I'm making the four pair amplifier so I'll just click on the row there so you can see for a four pair amp you, you could go as high as 64 volts if you wanted to you look here over at this table for a 64 volt DC rail, you need a 45 volt AC secondary on your transformer. Probably looking at about 900 VA or so. I may go to 1000 just because that's what will likely be available. You could also use two transformers at 450 VA or two transformers at 500 VA. That would also be appropriate. So if you have a look here for the for this particular pair of transistors, you know, with four output pairs, 64 volt rails is fine. The drivers, the best choice is the Toshiba 2SC4793 and 2SA1837 or the Sandcan. You can also use the Onsemi 15030 and 15031. You can also use these Sandcans here or the 15032s and 15033s if you want to, but if you're going to, if you need to make 
200 watts at 8 ohm for argument's sake, which will equate to, you know, something like 360 watts at, at 4 ohm. You get a bit more if you oversize your transformer, by the way, uh, which we'll see about that a bit later. But at 4 ohms, if you're talking 360 watts and, and a 71 volt DC rail, I would suggest you go for the larger transistors here. My preference out of these would be, you know, perhaps have a look at the MJL4281, 4302, something like that in the TO264 package, which has a better thermal uh, rating than some of the smaller packages here, if you're going for a higher power option for this amp. All right, so once you've made your choices here, then you can go over to the bomb and get started on, on picking which parts that you want to use for your build. So let's go through and have a bit of a look. So starting at the top here, the first part is the Wolverine input section, and it gives you a couple of options for some of these parts. So you go through, you choose, oh, I'm going to get a 4.7 microfarad minimum uh, capacitor. It needs to be polypropylene. That's the input cap. I wouldn't skimp on that. I would go for whatever is the best option out of here that you can afford. Having said that, 4.7 microfarads will work just fine. Going down a bit further, you know, you've got options for silver mica capacitors here. I would opt for the better option here. You can see the 2% tolerance cap. And in the order that I made to mouse, I chose higher precision where I could and better quality for all of the resistors that I could. In general, I've ordered the resistors from this column, which are the Dale CMF55. They are a well-known, good quality resistor. They're pretty reliable. So if you have a little, little look here, a little bit further down, you have some choices to make. So when we were talking about rail voltage before, once you've worked out what sort of power you're, you're looking to achieve, choose the resistors which relate to that rail voltage. So for me, I'm probably going for 57 volt rails. So that means I would choose 33 kilo ohms in this option. So this row here is what I'll be picking from. I've ordered a couple of extras here in case, you know, I, I wanted to change the uh, rail voltage later down the track. Also, sometimes when you build these things, you might, you know, have a bit of a change of heart halfway through. You might want to use slightly more or slightly less voltage on, on the final build so just something to think about so as you go down once again choose the the appropriate resistor for the rail voltages that you've got in my case it would be this one so you've got two options there have a look at the data sheets on, on mouser or uh, or digikey work out which one suits you best we go a little bit further and there's actually something we need to talk about so so you, you basically repeat the same process down the list as you type in the part numbers into mouser and order them, you can paste in the whole bomb and and run an automatic tool to, to dig out the part numbers if you want to. But with this, I think it's worth being a little bit, bit thorough and uh, just, you know, going through line by line. As you choose the parts, maybe just, you know, green highlight the line that you've, you've uh, purchased or, or you've chosen so that you know what you've got or what you haven't got. And there's, you don't have to order it all in one one block. You could do it in separate blocks. It, it, it can end up being a, a you know a few hundred dollars for this sort of uh, amount of parts. So if you want to split it up or whatever works for you to to uh, to make it happen. So you may find some of these parts are difficult to get. So some people already have a stash of uh, transistors floating around. Great if you can if you've got that or if you can rely on someone who's got some parts lying around that would cover off some of these transistor choices. If not, you may have to do a little bit of searching around. I would suggest only use uh, known reputable component sellers. In this list here, we've got to look for this value here, right? RCC. So when you order the Q103 and Q104, which are... MJE340G parts or MJE340. What you need to do 
is measure the HFE of that part and then once you know that, choose the appropriate resistor value. So, for example, if your HFE is between 75 and 100, your value for RCC will be 91 ohms right here. Okay? So then you'd go ahead and order that part there or this part here. So I don't know what mine is because I haven't measured it yet. So I have ordered one of each of these for each board. Okay? So that's just something to consider and be aware of. Having said all this, once you've once you've gone through and ordered all the parts, and once again, I really recommend that you choose the, the parts that are recommended on here. Don't deviate too far because they've, the, the team has really uh, been quite thorough with choosing the parts. You know, you can then have a look further down here and decide on what power supply parts that you want to uh, use. All right. So for now, I'll wrap this video up because it's getting a little bit too long here. Once you've ordered all these parts, you know, let the waiting game begin. Have a think about how you're going to build the amp. So in the next video, I'm going to discuss how to match some of the transistors and actually how to match some of the resistors in this bill of materials because there's a couple of resistors here which are critical to the performance of the amp. So the resistors in the long tail pair near the current mirror. So I would suggest that you buy a few extra of those, and it's listed here in the bomb for R3 and R4 and R7 and R8. Get 10 or 20 or something like that, and then they can be matched. I'll have a look at that in the next video. Thanks for listening, guys. Feel free to subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you like the video. See you next time.